Today, we're going to look at the truth about Mount Rushmore that no one's talking about. The four presidents' faces that have been carved into the side of this mountain has become one of the world's largest pieces of sculpture as well as one of the most popular places to visit in America, attracting about two to three million visitors a year. But there's been a story that has been left out of the history books that was never taught in school. A story that holds the real history behind what really happened here on the land that Mount Rushmore sits on or should I say, the land that belongs to Lakota Sioux. In this video, we're not really going to get into much detail to the current events of Mount Rushmore today, but we are going to go back in time and expose the truth to what really happened here on the land and see how greed led to death and destruction. Hi, I'm Zach and welcome to Rooted Expeditions. If you're a fan of the abandoned, historical, and strange locations, then you are in the right place. Please give this video a thumbs up and let's get started in today's location. Between the year of 1927 and 1941 near Keystone, South Dakota, a 60 foot high sculpture was carved in the side of this mountain into four presidents' faces. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Which in 1941, wait, 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 the carving wait. stopped due to- are jumping too far ahead. Let's back up just a bit. In 1868, the Treaty of Fort Laramie wait, was wait, signed- Wait, wait, let's back up just a little bit more. Okay, right there, here it is. In 1803, when the Louisiana Purchase took place, which opened up the westward settlement after the United States bought about 828,000 square miles of land from France, which doubled the size of the United States and pretty much sealed the fate for the Native American tribes that were living across the land. Over the next several decades, tension would rise with the American settlers and the natives, and the natives were very skilled warriors defending their land when trespassers came onto their land to settle down or even prospectors who tried to search for minerals on their land which was gold, silver, etc. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they had a right to defend their territory from these American settlers. So the US government could not get the chief Red Cloud or Sioux tribes to flee the land, so they tried to come in and buy the land from the Sioux. Now, Chief Red Cloud was a great warrior chief amongst these tribes and had a lot of pull within the different tribes. Chief Red Cloud was not going to let the Americans, or should I say, the white man come in and take their land, so they refused to take the offer that the U.S. made to them. But a U.S. Army soldier seeing this unfold came up with this great idea that would help both the U.S. and the natives. And that idea would be a treaty that would cover about 60 million acres of land, which included the Black Hills, which this is where Rushmore sits or what was known to the natives as the Six Grandfathers. So in 1868, the Treaty of Fort Laramie was signed by both Sioux tribes and the U.S. government. The Treaty of Fort Laramie was an agreement between the United States and the Sioux tribes, and in this, the United States would recognize the Black Hills as part of this great Sioux reservation, set aside for exclusive use by the Sioux people. This treaty would also protect the Sioux from any outsiders who tried to invade their land and allow the Americans to pass through the land without any conflict. Now, the Sioux are made up of several different tribes that speak three different dialects, the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. The Lakota are among the largest, most Western of the three groups living in both North and South Dakota. So not long after signing this treaty or agreement, a very dark turn for the native people took place when American prospects Prospector. Prospectors came into the land. So not long after signing this treaty or agreement, a very dark turn for the native people took place when the American prospectors found out that there was gold in the land, which this in return would lead to many American settlers invading the Black Hills for this gold. After finding out that there was gold in the land, President Grant secretly ordered the army to not protect the local tribes while bounty hunters would come into the Black Hills and kill these natives. 
is bounty hunters would collect up to $300 for each native killed. And this was the plan to scare and drive out the natives from the land so that the US government could take over and possess the land. Which by them doing this had the Sioux tribe leave their land and retract from the claim that they had on the Black Hills. This didn't sit well with the Sioux tribes. In fact, this didn't sit well with them at all. They were watching their land quickly being taken from them. So great warriors from the Sioux tribe, such as Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, led to this resistance against the U.S. government. These were even the same warriors that fought and won against General George Custer in the Great Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876, which was fought in Montana, which was not far away. In fact, it was the next state over. General Custer was unaware that they would be outnumbered by these Native Americans that fought under the command of Sitting Bull and General Custer was outmanned and lost the battle in a gruesome, gruesome fight. But by 1877, the U.S. government had officially confiscated, or should I say, stolen the land from the Sioux. This was such a great loss for the Sioux people. The Black Hills, or I hope to say this right, Paha Sapa in the Lakota language, was sacred land as this region is a central to many Sioux religious traditions. Then to think things couldn't get any worse, in fact it did. On a cold day in December 1890, the US Cavalry were galloping around and they ended up finding a group of Lakota tribe and they noticed that they had guns and they wanted to confiscate these guns. So as they were confiscating these guns, one of the US soldiers panicked for whatever reason and shot off around into the crowd killing one of the Lakota tribe members. And once this happened, the U.S. Cavalry opened fire, killing about 300 men, women, and children. And those who were able to run away and escape were hunted down by the U.S. Cavalry. And when they were unarmed and struggling to get away through this thick snow, they were shot point blank, killing them. This became known as the Wounded Knee Massacre. Now it was said that three decades later, a man by the name of Dohan Robinson would come in and come up with this great idea to carve statues in the side of this mountain, which was known to the natives as the Six Grandfathers, which these statues would feature American and native Western heroes, such as Lewis and Clark and their expedition guide, Sakujawea, the Chief Red Cloud and the Chief Crazy Horse, and and Buffalo Bill Cody. But this sculpture came in who was named Borglum, who surprisingly belonged to the Ku Klux Klan, believed that this sculpture should have a more broader appeal and chose to sculpt the four president's faces on the side of this mountain. Which if you didn't know, the Ku Klux Klan were these men that ran around in these white sheets and wore these white pointy hats. I can't see how they think. Egos. Egos. Come on. Why? Carvings of the faces in the side of the mountain stopped in 1941 due to a shortage of funding. The Six Grandfather Mountain would be known today by many as Mount Rushmore. Here's a little bit of history for you. Please subscribe. Peace. I love you. And as always, God bless.